Hey guys, D-Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. Took out 205, easy peasy. Now we're gonna head into the old forest. Let's see what awaits. Could be pretty spoopy in here. Ooh, it is spoopy in here. Ooh. Oh, this, this girl's all in green with green hair. I feel like that's interesting. Like, I have, you know, I, in, in most, most people in the world, I believe, have either like a dark brown or a black hair, right? Brown hair. It's the most common. Do those people, I mean, you don't see those people just wearing brown. That'd be an interesting choice. I mean, do whatever you're into. But this is Cheryl. She has delicious cookies. She's sincerely happy to meet us, but she needs a favor. She's afraid to go through the forest alone. She has green hair, green eyes, and green clothes. It was meant to be. It's like people whose last name is indicative of a profession. There's a dentist in my area. Her last name is Dr. She's Dr. Gum. So it just makes sense that she would go into dentistry. So Cheryl here is a little afraid of going through the forest alone. And we being the consummate gentleman, will help her out. Now what's interesting is that as you traverse the Eterna Forest with Cheryl, she will double battle everything with you and so make sure that you're healed after every battle. So this is a good way to grind, if you're into that. I personally will not be doing that. If I see anything interesting that is catchable, I will consider it for the team. And we'll see what we'll do with that later. I'll go ahead and point this out. I'm not gonna go ahead into too much detail about what this specific area is, but it is something that we'll think about for later. That is a, that is a nifty way to Change the way you play Pokemon. We'll say that. Just to kind of keep it keep it brief for now. So every battle that you do with Cheryl will be a double battle. She will use her Pokemon. You will use yours, obviously. So it's not a true double battle in the sense that it's us against two people. It's not a two-on-one. So maybe technically this is the true double battle. This is the two-on-two. -two, but you don't get to pick your partner. Although Cheryl did choose us. So maybe we should feel good about that. So... We'll go ahead and see what we can do. Her hair is very long and braided. Interesting, interesting choice. She has a Chansey, so. Her Chansey will be a little bit of help. It's not, you know, Chansey's an interesting Pokemon. It makes sense that she would want to have something that's kind of, um, kind of more of a protector, kind of the, the motherly role. Chansey's interesting. I remember it being a Pokemon that just has an absolute buttload of HP. And it was such a a chore to try to find a Chansey. Back in the good old days, red and blue, you're in the Safari Zone. And you, there's a few Pokemon in the Safari Zone that were just particularly difficult to find. In this case, Chansey was definitely one of them. You know, Scyther, Tauros, Dratini. Just so tough. I mean, this Chansey is level 15 and it has 111 HP already. So I guess I don't really need to be healing here. It's kind of redundant. I could have used Recover too. That was, you know, me not using my nagging. But hey, as long as we're learning after the fact, that's what matters. Everything in life is a learning experience. I like to say that to make myself feel better and so I can sleep at night. So Chansey, so tough to find and you just felt really accomplished when you did get one because on top of the fact that it had a low encounter rate in the Safari Zone, it had a low catch rate too. So trying to find it was tough. And then when you finally did and you're throwing rocks and balls at it, that Chansey just would not stay in the ball. It just wouldn't. So it was really, really rewarding when you could finally catch one. And then in the future games, you know, like Gold and Silver, you could hope to find a Chansey in the wild in certain spots around Johto or Kanto, wherever it was, because it would give you a ton of HP. It was kind of the, nope, there it is again. There's my puzzle, there's my puzzle pieces. A ton of experience. And I mean, it does have a ton of HP, but that's not what I was going for. A ton of experience. And that experience, I would say is valuable, but it's kind of like a net, it's not really a net gain in those moments because of how hard it is to find. You know, it's not like in black and white, 
when you would be trying to find maybe like an Audino, however you say that. Audino was the one that would give you a ton of experience in those games. And it was really nice and convenient when you found one. It was definitely more plentiful than any Chansey, but you know, Chansey's OG, Chansey's cool. Got itself a, a pre-evolution in the gold and silver days. I think, no, I mean, maybe it was in this game. I think it was in this game. Um, I don't remember its name off the top of my head, but I almost had it. I, as I said that, I almost had it to be able to say it, but I forgot what it was. And what you do have, though, is that in Gold and Silver is when Chansey got its evolution, Blissey, which, you know, being completely honest, it looks almost the same as Chansey. They, I don't really feel like they put a ton of effort into designing that, but, you know, you've got... And I almost had it again. See, I'm gonna... This is gonna bother me for the rest of my days until I can remember the name. Now, the pre-evolution to Chansey, it's unfortunate I can't remember it because it's very, very cute. It's got, it's like, hair and, like, a little, uh, like, a little braid almost, which... I don't know if I should say hair. Like, what are those things that are coming off of Chansey's head? Is that hair? I'm not... Not 100% sure. I don't really want to commit to qualifying what that is. But anyway, as you can see, after every battle, right as rain, healed up 100%. I might jaunt through a little bit of the grass here and there just to see what we get. But the gimmick of the Eterna Forest is that you will have to go through all these double battles. Now, you don't technically have to do them like this. In certain cases, you will if the trainers are situated in an area that stacks them together and you can't avoid it. But you don't have to. Most of the time, you can just approach one of the trainers at a time. And when you do that, what will happen is you can essentially do a two-on-one. So, oof. That was pretty uncool if that cannot happen twice. It is going to happen twice. So Samuel, I'm so sorry. No experience for you in this battle. It's actually really unfortunate, but that's okay. Chansey's gonna give this Abra a little kiss. And it confuses it. That's another confusion move I've actually never seen before. So that's kind of interesting. So I think that for the most part, Abra is a pretty physically incapable defending creature. That was a very strangely worded sentence to basically say that their defense isn't great. Abra in the Abra line, as far as I'm aware, in the Pokemon world, unless things have changed in the last forever, are known as glass cannons, which means that Abra is very defensively weak. However, it is very quick and it can do a lot of damage when it gets the chance to attack. So it's got a ton of special attack ton of speed. Defense, not so great. I mean, as you saw, one measly wing attack from Sharon was enough to knock it out. Not too bad. And there's our quick claw coming in handy a second time. I don't know how many times it's triggered. I think that might be two. Not really struggling for, you know, being able to attack in the moment here, but yeah, see those racking up those zeros for experience really, really stinks. That guy's got a nice cowlick, and now Falfa. I really like their little neckerchiefs and their their jumpsuits. But what's con what's convenient is we don't have to worry about getting revived. Samuel is back, so I'm not sure if this is supposed to be a an example of like Cheryl is the universal healthcare of the Sinnoh world, but she certainly is very generous in being able to heal our Pokemon. I don't know why I said it like that, and being able to heal our Pokemon, but she is quite kind. Thank you, Cheryl. Her cookies are delicious. Her healing capabilities. Um, not gonna say that's delicious. That's kind of a, that's a little weird. We're gonna stay away from that. Cause here at DMike Industries, we do not say weird things in this channel. That wouldn't, that would be very unprofessional, and I would say pretty uncouth. So here we go. Hopefully you guys enjoy double battles, because this episode is full of them. I wouldn't have it any other way. That's not true. I actually would have it many other ways. Also, I think it's strange that we're fighting these two small children while they're wearing their undershirts. I'm not entirely sure I 
vibe with that. I don't really have a good way to... I mean, I do. I could just power through these battles and use Charlie to take all these baddies out, but I still need to power up Samuel, which is funny that I'm I'm spending all this time, you know, raising the Pokemon in the way that I am, because I don't entirely know how long some of them will stick around. There's not really a, you know, a definitive list in my head of what my team will be like. I mean, ideally, I'm thinking that I want to keep Charlie around, and I know that some people don't really have any sort of attachment to their starter and that they couldn't care less who they use. But the big reason for Charlie sticking around is one, as I mentioned it before, with the fire, or the lack thereof, dynamic in this game. So it's nice to have a consistent fire using Pokemon. That's pretty pretty good at it too. All the starters in this game are good, you know. Turtwig, Piplup, Chimchar, they're all pretty effective. This is kind of, I don't know if this was like the last real generation where I would say that. Well, I mean, you know, it's kind of tough because I feel like Squirtle, Bulbasaur, Charmander, all, all pretty solid Pokemon. Then Gold and Silver, there's kind of tiers of quality and things changed also as time went on because of move sets and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, Cyndaquil was pretty good. Totodile, great. And then Chikorita, you know, eh, you know. I probably just offended tens of people, I'm sorry. But that's just the way of the road. That's just how it is, everybody. Calling it how I see it. Okay. So we have a replacement for Ember, the Flame Wheel, which was the signature move of the time of, I believe, of the Cyndaquil line, which I think is interesting. This is a physical attacking move. Ember is a special attacking move, but the difference of attack power Plus, the difference being kind of negligible makes sense to learn Flame Wheel instead, in the same way that Water Pulse replaced Water Gun, etc. Things of that nature, or I guess it would be more akin to Charge replacing Thundershock. Those are the kinds of ways that, you know, you can, you play these games however you want to. You can have multiple types of the same element attack if you like it, if that's what you're into. I'm trying to spread the wealth a little bit, show off some variety. I'm not great at Pokemon games, but thankfully these games are easy enough or on the easier side that I don't routinely embarrass myself while I'm recording. So I love that. This is kind of easy mode for me. After a long day at the grindstone to be able to come home and Play some Pokemans, turn your brain off a little bit. Now I can do that now, because this game allows me to do so. And, and the easier that a game is, I feel like it gives you more of an ability to kind of be creative and think of things to say. Also, this protecting Burmy is super annoying. I'm gonna give it one more round before I bring in Charlie and just nuke it. Yes, okay, so I've had enough of you but easier the game is, the less I have to really focus on it a ton. Now this being a turn-based game, a role-playing game, etc., it, it does give me the luxury, the privilege, to be able to focus a little bit more on the commentary side of things, whereas when I'm playing your Link's Awakenings, your Mario's, you know, those require a certain level of like attentiveness to be able to do right because it's happening in the moment. I thought that was going to do more. I also thought it was going to use Protect again. Hopefully you, this Chansey can knock it out. Come on, Chansey. Yes. Taking a big Chan C and knocking it out. That was a really unnecessarily drawn out battle. Pretty uncool. Oh my gosh. And here's a Krikatoon with one of the best cries in all of Pokemon. There's a few people I know that are singing that cricket tune, but it's also very weak to fire. So it was here and it was there. Let the bodies hit the floor. There we go. So Donald and Philip, go back home and put on some more clothes. Make yourselves decent, gentlemen. Looking a little, 
too naked for my likings. Okay, so there's an item here. I also really enjoy the Eterna Forest theme. Let's see what we get here in the forest. Okay. There's a Buniri. I do believe that Buniri was introduced in this generation. So in order to catch Pokemon, I do believe that the rules, the them's the rules, is you have to knock out one of them. You can't catch both Pokemon, obviously. That wouldn't be physically possible. Now, I don't see myself using Buniri, but it can live on the team for a little bit. It's very cute. Kind of looks like it's covered in, in fluff. I, I will say that the evolution to Buniri has led to many an inappropriate art form, but we will not be doing that because here at d -Mike Industries, we pride ourselves on being wholesome and family friendly. So in the meantime, we will murder this Badoo. So you gotta take out one of the Pokemon. Now we will be gaining a little bit of experience from that, but this is just a matter of fact. This is the only situation where I will allow it. But we have to do that if we want to get to Buniri. So we'll let Chansey whittle it down a little bit. I don't know if I have anything where I won't kill it. I'm kind of noivous. Maybe one quick attack. Hopefully this does the trick. It's not too strong. Please do not. Perfect. No, do not use anything, Chansey. Do not. Do not. No. What does life do? What does life do do? Okay, so maybe, maybe Cheryl heard me talking and she was like, you know what? D-Mike really wants that Veneery. Let's not ruin the opportunity by murdering it on screen. I would have been pretty disappointed. Although I wouldn't put it past this game. It works, we get it. I'm gonna try to catch the Sinnoh Pokemon that I see. Why not? And we do, of course, get the residual experience. Oh, look at how cute and happy it is. Looks like it's got icing on its ears. It's one ear looks like a muffin. So let's go ahead and read about Buniri, the rabbit Pokemon, if you couldn't guess. It slams foes by sharply uncoiling its rolled ears. It stings enough to make a grown up cry in pain. Okay. So, cute on the outside, but uh, deadly as well on the outside. So this Buniri, her name will be Bonnie. And we'll see how long Buniri stays in the team. I do have that final slot for now. And what's nice is that when you want to swap out your Pokemon in this game, it is just a matter of doing the... Yes, here it is. So you hold the R button and it takes you to your boxes. Now, I don't have any extraneous Pokemon in this case. There are no Pokemon within the quote unquote PC, the personal computer that I've gained. I've only caught the six that I have on me. So interestingly is if you want to swap it out, you don't have to go to a Pokemon Center. The quality of life that we get from this is really, really good. I really appreciate that. So we've got a couple more psychic twins to attack. I actually don't know if they're twins, but I really like that kind of animation of them holding their balls above their head. So they've got a Psyduck, which is one of the red and blue favorite Pokemon of mine, as well as a Metatite. Metatite was introduced in Ruby and Sapphire. It was kind of one of those interesting Pokemon in that it's not your typical fighting type Pokemon. Metatite is a psychic and fighting type Pokemon. I don't know if it starts out that way, but I do know that once it evolves into Metacham, that it does have that quality, which I think is really interesting. It's kind of a unique typing, and it kind of goes into like the whole, um, you know, it kind of feels like, like a monk fighter almost. Now I don't know if Cheryl has anything beyond Chansey, so we might be getting uh, double teamed here, banged in the gang, and we don't really like that. We will might have to swap out here just to something a little bit stronger because Samuel, I don't know if if it's got really enough of the wherewithal to withstand 
the double attack. And it doesn't... You know, there's the nasty side effect of Pokemon battles. Those are the ones that I do believe that Cheryl will heal you, but I don't think she heals you from wild encounters. So you have to be mindful of that. It's just a kind of an unfortunate thing. There's not really a whole lot you can do about it, but first things first, I gotta get rid of this Metatite. It's kind of hanging around. It's overstayed. It's welcome. I don't like its weird Hershey kiss head with ears. Bye bye. Uh, bye bye. So we're doing pretty well so far. Water Pulse is a great move for Psyduck because it is a water type move that does confuse, which I think is very appropriate. I still never quite understood how in Pokemon, Psyduck, in the name Psy Duck, right? You kind of think of Psyduck or, you know, being psy psychic, perhaps? Psychonetic powers. Psyduck, when it evolves, it is a pure water type. It evolves into Golduck, also a pure water type. You th you'd think that it would have the psychic stuff down. Now, it does learn psychic moves, you know, it does have that as part of its moveset, but it is not a water psychic type, which I think is a little, a little disappointing. That was kind of the whole shtick, especially in the show, of uh, Psyduck being, you know, kind of lazy and you know, weak until it would get a headache. And then when it would get a headache, it would just unleash this fury of swipes on the foe and use very strong confusion and other psychic type attacks, which I think is really interesting. I do really enjoy Psyduck. Misty Psyduck was kind of a great part of comic relief of the show. The original anime, cartoon, whatever you want to call it, the original Kanto season the first so of of the show very nostalgic very fun so Rachel and Cody tried to gang up on us but we were not about to have that and if they were good psychics they shouldn't be surprised that we whooped them got him all right so I do believe that that should have healed us yes so we are in ship shape another encounter see if there's anything worthwhile here there is not we already have ourselves a Bonnie, and Silcoon and Cascoon are Ruby and Sapphire Pokemon on top of the fact that they suck. Not a huge fan of of Dustox and Beautifly, the Pokemon that they run into. Now, I think I've already done all the battles that are in this area. I know that there's quite a few double battles. You're going to run into a lot of kind of the same stuff. So your Bug Pokemon, your Grass Pokemon, I'm kind of surprised. I mean, I guess it sort of makes sense. Like there would be, there would be rabbits in a forest. That's that's pretty normal. Okay, you know what isn't normal is having a gosh dang Pokemon battle when you're half a step away. That's pretty uncool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an item that we were given in the last episode, I believe, and we're going to take one of those right meow. That item, in this case, if I could find it. In the regular bag in our normal sack, we're going to use a Repel. So Repel prevents any Pokemon that are lower than the level of your own Pokemon from sneaking up on you and taking you from behind in the wild grass. So I do believe that we're a higher level than any of the wild Pokemon in this area, so we should be okay. Unless we're going to run into a roaming legendary. Ooh, wouldn't that be fun, everybody? That's not going to happen, unfortunately. Not yet. But we still have some items to collect. Hopefully no more battles. I'm getting a little worn down by how many shenanigans we're finding. But there's jars of honey in here in a really cool upcoming location. But it's hidden behind these trees. So we'll have to see what those are going to be like in the future. But we made it through the forest. It appears that that's the end of the line. We were able to navigate Cheryl safely through the Eterna Forest. She is welcome. We are the, once again, consummate gentleman who will never hesitate to help a lady in distress. And in this game, Quality of Life, what's really nice is when you run out of using a repel, in this case 50 steps, it asks you if you want to use another one automatically. That's a very nice touch. So that is the end of that. We navigated through the end of the Eterna Forest. And next time we'll explore the other half of Route 
205. Thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D Mike. This has been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. And I will see you next time. Bye.